After uh, Mr. Florianchich and his anecdotes, uh, he's a great uh, man. I admire him, and uh, maybe it would be a time that we show you what was uh, going on in Vancouver. Is it possible? Yes. Because otherwise I can speak, 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 but you will never have a clue what cross-country skiing actually is. Probably some uh, are coming from countries where snow doesn't exist. Am I right or not? Yes. <laughs> so it's good that you just see a little bit. It was more or less really hard job, I would say. It was a uh, hard job in, um, in different style. It was not a hard job training. It was hard job uh, about convincing other people that this is what I want to do, this is what I like to do, and this is what I choose. So it was a um, fight. And uh, probably you noticed and asked yourself, how is possible that she went on competition when she had uh, broken ribs and uh, big pain. I must explain, we didn't notice that... Uh, okay, we noticed the pain, of course, but we didn't notice that uh, uh, the ribs are broken. I had a uh, uh, research made by uh, ultrasound and it didn't show because uh, the, the broke, uh, broken ribs was not shown there. So I had, um, I would say, permission that I can go on. and. Um, that's why I continued. And uh, probably you thought this is impossible to make. Uh, but it is, because um, you have all your life to prepare yourself for a main race, and that was for us Vancouver race. It was, uh, we were competing, racing, and preparing ourselves for 20 years. 
So I'm age now 33 and I had uh, behind me, I would say, 20, 23 years of work. So how many? 20 more and I will go to retirement? <laughs> or not really? <laughs> No, but I don't have a wish to retire, I actually, because um, this is a story which I will tell you about. It's um, about passion, it's about choosing what you actually like in your life and continue with that. Because nowadays I meet many youngs and uh, I ask them, them, what do you want? And they are saying, I don't know. Everything is useless, everything is boring, everything is stupid, I don't want, I don't know what I want. So I'm always telling them, please find in your life what you like, what you want to do, and please keep on going that way. And probably also some adults, many times I meet them and uh, they are in age 40 and they are bored like hell. Because they are saying, this job is killing me, I'm not happy at all. And I ask them, why you don't change? Why you don't have a courage to change your life? And they are saying, you know, I get used to. And I said, yeah, but this is a stupid excuse. To get used to, it's not enough. You have to like it. You have to love it. Because that's the reason why you will be so successful in what you are doing. And um, I must say that I was blessed because I found cross-country skiing. Because in that uh, days, as I mentioned, nobody knew actually very well in Slovenia what cross-country skiing is. Actually, everybody were making uh, alpine skiing. It was more fun, it was more trendy, it was more expensive, you know, and like that. So, also my, um, my parents, didn't want that I continue with cross-country skiing because they thought that, okay, it's like this picture. It's so exhausting. It's so exhausting. You stop and go to school. And uh, at least you will get something from life. And I said, but this is what I want uh, for my life. I want to be athlete. I want to do my own way. And uh, I must um, confess that uh, nobody from my relatives uh, was sportsman. Not even before, not even now. So I don't know how come that I become a sportsman. But I did. And uh, so, as I said, I fight all my uh, young uh, ages uh, against uh, rumors, against the uh, environment who were preventing me to continue every day. I was coming home, everybody was standing, okay, Petra, now it's time for you to stop. I was age 20, now it's really time to stop. It was enough of fun, please go to school, start normal life. And I was crying and I was saying, please, let me do what I want to do. And they were saying, okay, please uh, finish your education, at least you stop for a year. And I said, no, if I stop for a year, it will be the end of everything. But uh, now is a question, do you know how long uh, can can a service guy be absent from the World Cup? Any clue? And he's out from regime. He has only one year. One year he can be missed from the World Cup, otherwise he's, um, he's losing knowledge. Because development in the World Cup is going so fast. So that's why he has to continue all the time staying in the World Cup races and competitions. So also with me, with my regime of training, I was saying I couldn't stop. And um, as they were mentioned, yes, I was the first who won the first World Cup race. I was the first who won the medal in the World Championships. And uh, it was not easy times in that day because uh, the Norwegians, are here any Norwegians? No? But I tell you, they are rich guys. <laughs> and they can afford equipment which I couldn't afford. And they can afford uh, training camps which I couldn't afford. But I had a wish, I had a will. And um, we never give up. And I, have a I had a team. And uh, those things were the most important for my success. So I went through... Um, through hard times, through easy times, but how can we succeed without money? Any clue? What we did against Norwegians, who had a lot of money, 
because in uh, the World Cup it's not easy because there are some uh, Vax companies you know, who are producing the Vaxes and uh, I would say it's 10 of them uh, in the world and uh, producing the best Vaxes in the world and came a good team with a lot of money put a suitcase full of money on the table and say this Vax for next two seasons is ours so how could we fight against them? Any clue? This is true, but you know, still, sometimes you have to have a good skis also. <laughs> that will help your motivation. It was my Torino experience, uh, one uh, Olympic Games earlier. It was that uh, in climbs I had uh, first to third time, but in downhill I had 69th officially measured time. So the skis were important in our uh, in our sport. So how come we uh, fight against them? So we did invent, like uh, Mr. Florianchich. We found our new waxes, and one of the waxes which really worked very well was like uh, anti freeze, you know, who is um, defreezing the airplanes, mm -hmm. you know, before flight. Yeah, we use that. But don't tell to others. <laughs> this, it, it is working, I tell you. It is really working. Because we didn't have money to buy everything and we invented. And we were trying as hard as possible. And everybody were, you know, it was multitasking uh, team, I would say. It was, uh, we all had multitasking uh, jobs, I would say. Because it was, uh, it was not only that I am I am cross-country skier athlete, and this is what I do, nothing else. And the service guy is only service guy, he will never done nothing else. No, we did everything what was necessary for us to succeed. So I was like PR for our uh, team, I was like manager for our team, I was negotiating always for contracts for our team, I was uh, working with sponsors um, and like that. And you know, probably also in your companies or in your environment, everybody now are coping with one problem. This is not my work. This is not my job. This is not my task. Do you know these excuses? Yes, you do. Somebody are <laughs> familiar with that. And that's wrong. I would say that's not appropriate if you want to succeed. Because when I finish my career right now, I do other stuff in my life. I am uh, organizing team buildings, I am uh, taking uh, lessons and uh, I work with sponsors different and uh, I do in many stuff uh, like uh, contracts on my own. And this is what I learned from cross-country skiing also because I never allowed that this is not my work, this is not my job. Somebody else should need to do instead of me. So please, give this note to your children, to your students, to everybody. You never know when uh, this will be your next work. So we learned a lot and I was really happy that I had possibilities. Uh, but what was the thing which gave us that power that we want? The races. No clue. We had a talent, but everybody has a talent. We were hard workers, but on the, when you are on top, everybody are. In top 30, there is no guy or girl who will not train in hell. What was that that made us different? He said it was motivation, but it was something else. We had really clear goal and aim. We always knew what we want and how we will achieve that. And I will not ask you that, but uh, maybe you should need to concern or think about. It's very important that each of you knows what is your goal for next week, next five, year, five months and next five years. Your goal should need to be really clear. Maybe sometimes it's good that you just write it down. 
because otherwise you will just forget or you will just say, yeah, it came some some hard circumstances and uh, it's okay if I'm fork. It's okay if I'm ten. No, it's not okay. If your goal goal is not so clear, sooner or later you will lose it. And uh, sooner or later you will not win, you will be only third. And when you will become a third, you will become also a tenth. And so this is my next suggestion, what I learned from cross-country skiing or from sport. Please, keep your goals really clear. And you know, sometimes I'm so surprised. I speak with uh, people and they're saying, I wish to go one day on Maldives. I wish to have an Audi, new one, new model. And I come to his, uh, his office, <coughs> there is no picture what he wants. And I said to him, but how is it possible for you to achieve one day your goal if I don't see them? And if they are not there every day for you? And he said, yeah, tomorrow I will start. I will, I will do tomorrow, first step. Yeah, it's always tomorrow. In cross-country skiing, in sport, it's never tomorrow. It's today. So I don't think that there was, uh, there was many athletes who were in position to win uh, Olympic medal. And uh, when they present Olympic medal on YouTube or Internet, we just print it and put it on the wall ahead of our head in our room and just every morning when I woke up I look at her I said I will want that medal and every evening when I went to sleep I said today I did it too a little to achieve that medal so yeah it was motivation so please keep your goals clear and on your wall if it's possible and Another sentence about my team. What do you think that it's important for athletes? Why we are so, you know, devoted, dedicated? Everybody are thinking that we are egoistic. We are not. Top athletes are never egoistic. They are just devoted and dedicated. Uh, they are really nice guys. So, do you have a clue? It's not about medal. It's not about money. It's about improving yourself every day, each day. And it's about friendships. And it's about love to what you do. So maybe this is good to remember because I think in these days we all forgot. It's really important about friendship because when you saw um, when I won this medal, a lot of people came it was my team and uh, they helped me and we were happy and celebrating together and I must tell you that sometimes I was celebrating alone because they were working and this is really boring. No, it's so much fun when you are celebrating with somebody who is close to you. So please keep people close to you because you will need them when you will win or when you will lose. You will need them. And that was my, I would say, the best thing in my life. We are still now, we are not cooperating now two years, but we are still good friends. I would say with some the best friends. We are, they are from abroad, they are some from uh, Slovakia, some from Italy, and uh, we meet us recently. It was, uh, it's clear that uh, each year we meet us at least two or three times and we are you know we are becoming old because we are all the time speaking that was a day you know <laughs> that was a day you know when we were celebrating and yeah but I must say we were we always had a lack of money but we never had a lack of courage and that was the next um, thing which I would like to share with you uh, probably you notice here are all white, red, black suits and on some pictures you will notice this uh, flashy yellow. Did you notice? Yeah. yeah. This was good thing, but this was uh, like PR. We invented that uh, racing suit. Uh, okay, we thought it will be a little bit more silver. 
but uh, they are a little bit screwed, <laughs> so it came totally flashy yellow. But uh, that's how he became um, and became more popular. Uh, youngs, uh, you know, children, they really knew where Kvitramajdic is, and also the sponsors, they grabbed that thing. But you know what is the uh, bad side of that? When you are winning, <coughs> it's perfect. You are visible. But where you are on 50 position, it's also very clear where you are. <laughs> so, I would like to tell you, take a risk. Be brave, because in business you have to do that. And uh, it's not um, that you are just waiting, that somebody somebody will help you or something will come and uh, just, I, I would say, fall from the sky. No, it's never, it's never happening like that. So, also the last thing, I will explain you a little bit more about Olympics. Everybody was saying, ah, but you had a little luck also, huh? And I said, uh, yes, because we didn't notice that I'm so seriously injured. But uh, that was the only luck. And uh, many times in sports you're listening, oh, if I would have a little bit more of luck. <coughs> it's not about that. You have to be prepared. And also me. In Olympics, as I mentioned, I was a great favorite. I won everything before, which was 20 years of what and how we were preparing ourselves. And I will give you the story. It was um, our uh, doctor, who is coming from Germany, he was uh, there with us for a week, week before uh, my main competition, and he had a dream. And in his dream, I was competing, I was winning, but before I finish my race, everybody uh, overtake me. And he woke up, he was really religious also, he still is, and he went to the church immediately, and he had this bad feeling, something will happen. And uh, one night before start, that was week after, uh, he, uh, doctor's dreams, and uh, one night before start, my coach had similar dreams, and it was that uh, I'm winning the race, but uh, before finish, I disappear. I never came to the finish. And he just woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning. He said to himself, okay, just a dream. And he slept again. Again, same dreams. And uh, in the morning, they meet uh, in the back cabin. They were talking to each other. And he said, you know what? Something will go on. Something is going on. Something will happen. I had a very bad dream. And the doctor said to me, I had this dream similar one week before. So, why I am telling you this story? Because the doctor, one week before uh, my main competition, he was, um, when he had these dreams, he, uh, he came and said, Petra, what you will do when you broke a pool? What you will do when you broke a ski? What you will do when you will fall? what you will do when you will be in fourth position, what you will do, always what you will do when. And I told him, but Milos, it's impossible to predict everything. And he, all week, he was speaking to myself, okay, you have to predict everything. And when this accident happened, he finished immediately. I told him, okay, we won it. And then, uh, and then I told him, you see, Milos, you cannot predict everything. <laughs> But the thing was, he kept me awake. So, when this accident happened, you didn't saw it, maybe you can um, look on YouTube or somewhere. And when I was awake, I fall, I crash, but I said, okay, it happened. Okay, I'm prepared, I will do it. I was physically very good prepared, so the muscles were um, very and uh, they hold uh, the whole weight and everything and uh, and also psychologically I was really um, awake and uh, in good uh, shape so that was the winning mentality I was awake and when it happened I react so please keep yourself awake have your 
team and have your hobby. Cross country skiing always in my life was only a hobby. It was a great pleasure. Thank you.